and see it's making it, right? I'll just keep opening these up just a little bit at a time. So you're giving 110 volts there? Yep. Just to the copper, <coughs> and it's oh, jumping. No, it's, um, that's my transformers. Oh, it's going to the transformers. Okay, I'm right here. I'm not making it every time. I'm right there. It won't. It won't break down any more air. Okay. Okay. That's done. Don't don't, don't touch it anymore. Any more than that. That's good enough. <coughs> okay. That out of here. So make sure when you're testing this, very careful. You just just set your spark gap until it's. Think safety so, first. Yeah. Who's gonna guess on it? What that belongs there or not? I don't know. That's our hookup. We can adjust this adjustable primary tab. Anywhere along the coil. Well, your your coil will tune your top load. As you change this, you change that. As you change capacitance, you change that. It all affects. Everything affects it. So now the vacuum. No. I just got this one. And I haven't, I haven't tried this one. <laughs> the new apparatus. So you're using a vacuum on the spark gap. Yep. A vacuum. So you're pulling the air out of the... Through it. Through it. Yep. Pulling the air through the spark gap. Yeah, this is, this is suction. So... I've been using a shop vac, but it's so fucking noisy. This is this is noisy, but it's not as bad. Mm-hmm. So is this like a woodworking sucker or something, or I don't know what some kind of is. some kind of pump? So it's a vacuum slash blower. The blower suck. I don't know which way it goes. I don't know what but it it's was. Just, for us. But we're just using this because it's quieter than a. Yeah, I just got it too, so I don't know. So I'm okay. Put this up into this hose. Well, they better put a piece of tape on there. <clears throat> We're sucking air through the air gap. Yeah, shop back works. Does it matter the flow rate coming through the? Yep. That's why. That's why I got this little door on here. Oh, okay. That's just a bleed off. We got a bleed, bleed off, off valve or something. Yeah. Flow rate. And that'll affect our our sparks. I've seen, uh, you know, some mechanical rotary spark gaps, but uh, do you see it? Oh, yeah. that one up there. An, an advantage to one or the other? Well, there's a lot of opinion that goes on about that. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a little synchronous rotary spark gap. This is the synchronous. Yeah, this this motor here will give me uh, 120 pulses per second. 120 pulses. Because your your sign on your house is 60, and because you got an above ground state and a below ground state, you want to be at 120 beats per second. You have to be that way with these center tap things. You can't just go random like that one there. It's just an electric motor. Mm-hmm. Just, and that's just a random thing. You got to be synchronized with your AC current. That's the key. Yeah, you have to be. You have to be synchronized. synchronized with with these types of transformers. You have to be synchronized. And to, you, what you mean by synchronized is this is this is in sync with the 60 hertz. Uh, so the amount current. of revolutions has to be in sync. It has to be in sync with the current. Oh, the current's got to be in sync. So. I can show you how you can tell if your motor is synchronous if it doesn't stay. Do you want to adjust the, the spin of the motor? Or is it you turn it on and it's one speed? It's a, it's a one speed deal. And it'll lo it locks in at a... I'll show you. Okay. <clears throat> the easiest way to do that is to... And the amount of, of uh, pins? Does that make a difference? Yeah. Yeah. So the phases. Each, or? Yeah. This is a um, an eighteen hundred RPM motor. Okay. If you do the math on that and run it down, you need two pulses per second. If you run, just run the math. So 
at 1800 RPM I'm getting two pulses per second. <clears throat> Let's show you what two pulses looks like. <clears throat> You'll I, see this. I see you got adjustable knobs, copper, brass. Here? A safety gap, yeah. Safety gap. <clears throat> no wonder a, a, a regular fluorescent light bulb. I guess move this out of the way. Out of the way. Well, you got a lot of fun stuff to work on down here, Bill. Yeah. This is just a regular ballasted fluorescent light. These are electronic. These don't work for you. Okay. Got to have the ballast. Yeah. I'll Different. Different frequency or different well, current? They, they run it. The bulbs are pulsed at 60 hertz. Okay, and if you come over here and watch the shadows. Watch the shadows. Like You'll see it'll sync lock. You see that shadow come up? Okay. You see that? Yeah. It's faint. It, that's acting like a strobe light. See how it just it locks in? Yeah. That's what a synchronous motor will do, and it'll lock in at the same point every time, because it's in it's in phase with the AC current coming in. So this is working in conjunction with this ballast. Well, and, the, yeah. the ballast is pulsing that lamp at 120 cycles. 120 cycles. Yeah, because it's we have 60 hertz coming in. Okay. Okay, but in order for you to see the full sign, you got one on the high, one on the low, so it's 120 cycles, and that's why that you can see it synchronize in. When it does that little that little jump, yep, it's that's it's synchronizing. It's sinking, yeah, sinking. Right, then it finds it and it locks in. Okay, it's finding that current flow. Yep, it's locking in on that AC pulse. With a regular motor, you'll see that, but that could hunt around. Okay. This motor is a just regular AC. No, it's no. an AC synchronous motor. Oh, it's an AC synchronous motor. Yeah. It's not any. It's not any motor. It's got to be an AC it's synchronous. It's a synchronous motor. Yeah. And some motors aren't labeled, but if you're wondering if it's a sync motor, this is how you can tell. Take a fluorescent light. Get yourself in a dark room and look. You can see. You can see that it, as it comes into phase. Sometimes that you see there, it locks up and then it hunts around. You know. That's how you tell. But yeah, synchronous motors for rotary spark gap. But this one's. And this uh, apparatus behind the motor? Well, it's a capacitor start. It's a capacitor start. Yeah. I got another cap added here so I can put a variac on here. Um, with just one. Like just just that one little one, you don't get much action on the variac to control. You can control that thing as to bring it into synchronization with your Tesla coil. So you have a variac, and you can you can move that that shadow that you see. Yeah. You can you can hunt that around just a little bit to where you can get it tuned into your coil. Well, I heard some some noise adjustment too along with the shadow. You could hear the RPM kind of kind of a yeah, adjust. Rrr. When you're talking about shadow, you can see the the light kind of go in tune with the right it synchronizes. Synchronizes, yeah. yeah. Well, that's this is. It's a synchronous rotary spark gap. Have you used that on this coil? I can't. I can't drive that on this. Oh, you can't. It doesn't like it. It's too hot. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Now on these pins, on this, we're looking at a gap of. Can I rotate this just a slight yeah. bit? You're looking at maybe less than a sixteenth so of an inch. Hit. Just so they don't Just hit. so they don't touch. Yeah, you don't want them to hit. <coughs> these are. Uh, and they're adjustable. If you need to fine tune them here. Mm -hmm. Here. Or here. I and that's your safety wires gap. on here. That's where I hook my wires on. No, that's. Nice simple design. Yeah. Uh, very effective. Fused on the motor. Yeah, I've used it on a on a smaller one. I just kind of put that together. No, I've seen some like this uh, in books, actually in some mm -hmm. 
some similar in some old Tesla books, I think, maybe. I tried syncing this one up. This is a 10,000 RPM motor, okay? And I, and I got these so they just pulse through here. There's no conductor around the outside. So that, that's a pulse, that's a pulse, that's a pulse, that's a pulse. And when I got it going at about 800-something RPMs or whatever the hell the math was, I met 120 beats per second. But it hunts around because it's not a synchronous motor. And you can't use it for a Tesla coil, it won't work. At least not with sign transformers. If you have a power transformer, then you can use those. If you have Yeah, but we don't have power transformers. Oh, I, I, what did you say? I missed that. Uh, if you don't have a power transformer, if you have a... If you have these center tap grounded oil ignition transformers or neon sign transformers, if you have, you have to be synchronous. You have to be this. Yep. The oil igniters and the neons. Yep. You need to be synchronized. With, if you're using a rotary spark gap. Now I know that there are some transformers, like those big pig style ones. Yep, you don't need you don't need synchronous with that. You don't need synchronous. Mm -hmm. And there's other high voltage power supplies out there too, transformers that <coughs> if they're if they're not they're not center tap grounded. <coughs> what happens is if this thing goes out of if this thing goes out of sync when you're in operation Sure. For whatever reason, it comes unplugged or something, whatever, right? You're taking a very good chance you might blow a transformer or a capacitor because your current, your voltage rise in your tank circuit is going to go to at 10, probably something to 25 to 30,000 volts, and you'll blow the dielectrics out of the out of the transformers or your capacitors, and it, and it does happen. And when you talk about center taps. These are midpoint grounded. The neons and the. This is all internal things. Yeah. Center taps. Yeah. They're. What you have is you have two. You have two windings on the high voltage side. That's why each leg has to test to the case. If you just check them to one another, you're. you're it's false because one of them's sparking. And if this one was dead, it would be sparking to its shorted point inside. So you need to check it to the case each one separate to the case. That mm -hmm. tell you that both the high voltage windings are good. 5,000 here, 5,000 here for a total of 10,000. Each one's on the other side of the of the sign. You got a... Yeah, anywhere on there. Uh, you know, here here's your sign like this, right? Here's 5K here and 5K here put together is 10K on each sign. So if one winding's blowing out, you're actually only seeing 5K. And I don't know about you, but my multimeters don't go up there, and I don't want to put them on there. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't have the setup to do that.